Hey, Matt's fanatics, and welcome back. If you've just tuned in, it's never too late to tune into Tenfold Live. We're going to go into our last analytical ge geometry question. Just a reminder, next week we start our matric revision. We're going to go through our papers from last year, 2018, and we're going to try and make sure that you understand where these matric papers come from. Yeah, the memos are available online, but they don't really explain to you how this stuff works. So hopefully we'll be able to help you through your exam period. I know it gets a little stressy and it's not so great, but we're here for you. We're here to help you. The show is proudly brought to you by Liberty, as is our app, guys. So make sure you download that app. It's full of really great content and we really just want to be there for you and your maths careers. It ranges from grade 10 to matric and it also has a really great live streaming option. If you guys are sitting on Wi-Fi or you have data to spare and you're not near a TV but you really want to catch our show, download the app. You can totally stream our show through that app. It's got great streaming abilities, lets you catch every second of Tenfold Live and we love being here for you. Our last question is sent to us by Akani. It's our wildcard question, which means it's off topic from today. It's not analytical geometry, but I'm super excited to get into it. So let's see what he has to say. Oh, shout out, shout out, shout out. My name is Akani. I'm from Kwapigilanga High School in Alex. I would love to get help under this question. Thank you. Alrighty, okay, so this question is differential calculus. We've got a cubic function that we need to be working with. There's some confusing differentiation stuff happening and derivatives. I'm really excited about this question because I've actually become a little bit of a pro with the cubic functions because that's all I did when we were doing calculus. So let's hop into this question. I love it. I'm excited for it. Let's see if we can help you through your maths. It says, in the diagram alongside, ours is below, the graph of y equals f prime of x. Big warning sign there, it's f prime of x, not f of x. Is represented where f of x is equal to ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx represents a cubic function. Okay, so that is the original function. Now I don't know if you guys caught our calculus series, but if we're given that the first derivative is a parabola, which is what this clearly is, and it's going to be in terms of x squared. It means that the original function before you derived its equation is a cubic function, and it's in terms of x cubed. And the second derivative, if you derive it again, is going to be in the form of a linear function, and that is just in terms of plain old x. So what they're saying in this question is they've given us a parabola, and they're saying that this is the first derivative of the original cubic function. So if we derive the equation of the cubic function, it gives us the equation of this exact parabola. Bear that in mind. So firstly, it says determine the equation of both, both the first derivative and the original function where the original function was a cubic. OK, so where do we even start with this? Well, here we have a lot of missing variables which doesn't really help us. But they have given us points on the graph. We have two x-intercepts and we have a y-intercept. So if we plot those points out, we know that we have negative 1 and 0. We have 0 and 15. And we also have 5 and 0. So basically what that means is f prime of negative 1 and f prime of 5 are the two x-intercepts, and they give us 0. And then it also intercepts the y-axis at 15. OK, so it says, determine the equation of f prime of x and f of x. OK, so if we have that f of x is equal to that situation there, then f prime of x is equal to 3ax squared plus 2bx plus c. Easy differentiation. We also know that f prime of negative 1 is equal to 3a into negative 1 squared plus 2b into negative 1 plus c, and that gives us this y value of 0. So that means that negative 3a, um, that's a positive actually, and this over here would be a negative, minus 2b plus c equals zero. Okay. 
The next point, if we say f prime of what was the x value zero is equal to three a multiplied by zero plus two b multiplied by zero plus c and that equals the y value of 15 which is given to us by that intercept there. So that's easy, these both give us zero which means that c is equal to 15. So that is our first variable found, ha, which means that this equation here becomes 3a minus 2b plus 15 equals zero. And using the last point we say f prime of the x value up here is five we get 3a multiplied by 5 squared plus 2b multiplied by 5 plus c, which was 15, which we just found, and that also gives us 0, which means that 5 squared is 25 multiplied by 3 is 75a plus 5 times 2 is 10b plus 15 equals 0. Ah, so now this ties into what I was saying earlier. We have two different variables, which means we need two simultaneous equations. Okay, so I'm going to try and get both of these equations in terms of B. So if we look at equation one from up here, we had 3A minus 2B plus 15 equals zero. Let me rule off here so we know, which means that 3A plus 15 is equal to 2b and if we isolate b we get b is equal to 3a plus 15 all over 2. So that's simply manipulating our first equation into terms of b. Now if we look at our second equation here we had 75a plus 10b plus 15 is equal to 0 which means that 10b is equal to negative 15 minus 75a, which means that b is equal to negative 15 minus 75a all over 10. But those are a lot of really big numbers with common factors in them. So if we take out a common factor, we can say that b is equal to, I'm going to take out a factor of 5, so we get negative 3 minus 15a all over 2. Okay, so that is the manipulation of our second equation. So now we have one equation and another equation in terms of b. So we can simply equate them to each other. So we had 3a plus 15 over 2 is equal to negative 3 minus 15a also all over 2. Okay, now we simply solve for them, so if we cross multiply, or if we see that they're over the same denominator, so the numerators must be the same, we can say that 3a plus 15 is equal to negative 3 minus 15a. If we solve or try to isolate a, we say 3a plus 15a gives us 18a equal to negative 3 minus 15 which is negative 18 which means that a easy peasy is negative 1. Now to solve for the other variable which is b because remember we've already solved for c up at the top there. To solve for b we just simply substitute this a value into one of the b equations. So one of the b equations is 3a plus 15 over 2 which gives us negative 3 plus 15 over 2, which gives us 12 over 2, which is 6. So we found that A is equal to negative 1, B is equal to 6, and C is equal to 15. Now remember, this is not what they asked us in the beginning, guys. I'm just severely running out of time for this question. We found these variables, but they said, write out the equations of the first derivative and the original. So you need to go and substitute these into those two equations that we wrote out at the beginning. Okay, hopefully this makes sense with your calculus. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. We love being here for you guys. Make sure you send in your questions. We love hearing from you. Some of you have sent in 
such lovely videos. We love hearing from you. Your videos are so exciting sometimes. All the best for your exams, guys. If we're not in time to revise for your exams, we're really sorry that we missed them. Catch our revision shows anyway. They'll help you through your midterms and your prelims and all of that stuff. Thanks again to Liberty for sponsoring us and thank you guys so much for tuning in day after day. You are so loyal to us and we love being here for you. We will be back tomorrow, same time, same place for more analytical. Make sure you tune in and have a fantastic evening.